Welcome to the McNeese Food and Beverage Law podcast series. In this video podcast, attorney Lois Duquette gives insight on the legal risk of stating a product is natural. Ms. Duquette practices in the food and beverage and intellectual property practice groups at McNeese. General Mills made headlines in August when it announced that it would be dropping the claim made with 100% natural whole grain oats from its Nature Valley brand granola bars to settle a lawsuit that had been filed against it by three consumer groups. That lawsuit alleged that the claim 100% natural was misleading because independent testing had showed that the product contained glyphosate, a chemical found in weed killer. A spokesperson for one of the three consumer groups that sued General Mills said in a statement, Agreements like the one with General Mills is just the first step. We still have to push for a long-term solution to the problem of using the word natural in ways that mislead consumers. As can be seen from statements like this, companies that use the term natural are putting themselves in the litigation sites of class action plaintiffs. Natural claims on food products are popular targets for lawsuits because there is no binding government regulation defining what the term natural means. Although the FDA and USDA have issued guidance on the meaning of natural, this guidance is non-binding. As a result, a proliferation of lawsuits have been filed alleging that the use of the word natural misleads consumers because the product does not meet the consumer's definition of natural. Such cases have been based on allegations that the products include ingredients that are actually artificial and not natural, that the products include GMO ingredients, that the products are made with ingredients subject to a higher degree of processing than would be expected for a natural product, or, as in the case of the Nature Valley granola bars, that the products contain unnatural things like the chemical found in weed killer. Both the USDA and the FDA have long promised to issue binding regulations defining natural, but they have yet to do so. In February 2018, the New York Times reported that in an emailed statement to it, FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb stated, We recognize that consumers are trusting in products labeled natural, without clarity around the term. Consumers have called upon the FDA to help define the term natural, and we take the responsibility to provide this clarity seriously. We will have more to say on the issue soon. More than six months later, as of the time of this recording, the FDA still has not issued its regulations, demonstrating that the meaning of soon may be as open to interpretation as the meaning of natural. In the meantime, companies in the food industry continue to be on the receiving end of lawsuits alleging that their use of the term natural misleads consumers and constitutes false advertising. For example, recently, a lawsuit was filed against Trader Joe's alleging that its grapefruit, lime, tangerine, sour gummies contain not only natural flavors as advertised, but also artificial flavors. In, in particular, DL malic acid, which is used to create the sour flavor. A lawsuit was filed this summer against Lamar Foods, alleging that its claim that its garlic expression salad dressing is 100% natural is misleading because the product contains xanthan gum. And a lawsuit was filed this summer against the maker of Florida's natural brand orange juice, alleging that the product contains trace amounts of glyphosate, that same weed killer contained in the allegations against Nature's Valley granola bars. The claims against Florida's natural may be especially concerning for that defendant since the natural claim is not only an advertising claim but also an integral part of the brand name. Consequently, that defendant cannot avoid the cost of defending the case by merely deciding to drop the natural claim. It would also have to decide to change its brand name. What can a food marketer do in the face of such a litigious environment and lack of regulation around the meaning of the term natural? Until the FDA and the USDA issue binding regulations defining the term, it probably would be wise to avoid using it. Other strategies that may reduce the risk of a lawsuit include accurately describe what you mean by natural without actually using that word. Make a claim for which third-party certification is available, such as organic and non-GMO, 
and then obtain the third party certification seal. The benefit of these programs is that they provide a clear definition of what you mean by the claim and they audit for compliance. While these programs may be an added expense, keep in mind that so is defending a lawsuit. Don't adopt a brand name that includes natural or any other claim for that matter. If the claim cannot withstand scrutiny, you may end up having to change your brand name in addition to paying damages. The Food and Beverage Group at McNeese regularly advises clients regarding advertising claims for their food and beverage products. If you would like more information on this topic, please contact me using the information on the screen.